Hello, thanks very much for joining me again. Uh, today, for a river pattern, I'm going to tie a very simple caddis pattern. Uh, in the vise is a Hanak 330 barbless hook at size 12. And coupled with that, I've got one of the Hanak Eco beads at 3.3 millimeters. And it's just a plain tungsten bead. The thread I'm going to be using to start off with is a uni thread. This is uh, 140, quite the, the thickest of the uni threads, and it's in a, a light tan. First thing I'm going to do then is add a tiny little bit of super glue to the shank. And cast my thread on. Now, I'm using this thread really to create a nice tapered body for this bug. So I want it to be quite thick at the top towards the bead and tapered down towards the butt end. Now I'm going to let go of my rat's tail and just remove it. Okay, the rib of this fly is going to be some soft copper. Uh, I do prefer black, to be honest, but I've run out of that, so I'm going to use a copper. It works um, just as well. I'm going to catch that in at the start of my taper. Like so. And come all the way down to where I want the bottom of my fly to be. Now for the body, you can use um, some cream dubbin, light dubbin, but what I'm gonna do is, is just show you something else. Um, this is from the local haberdashery, it's about 99p, some wool, and it's in a light cream. Uh, good enough for Frank Sawyer, good enough for me. So just take a little snip of the wool. Now, wool has a it's made up of three or four strands generally. So what I want to do is just untangle it a little bit. And I want to separate just two strands. So this wool's a four core. So I've just stripped away, put the other half away for later. And I've got my two strands now. So what I'm going to do is quickly bring my thread back up to near the top, about an eighth of an inch away from my bead. And I'm going to catch that in like so. Now, as I'm coming back down, I'm pulling my wool as tightly as I dare, just to try and get it nice and flat. So all the way down and then back up again. Now I'm just going to adjust my hook in the vise slightly, like so, and I'm just going to unravel my wool. So I can see my two strands, if I just tilt this up, you can see I've got them lying nice and side by side, and I want to bring them round to form my body. Now I'm taking my time here, but this is actually a very quick fly to tie. Uh, the, the wool makes an excellent body material. It's easy to work with and quick to work with. No messing about with any dubbing. It's just straight on the shank of the hook. Now I'm going to come back up to my thorax area and that's as far as I need to take my wool. So I'm going to bring that over two or three turns just to lock it into place. Then I can come in with my scissors and take my waist away. Next then, what I want to do is cast this thread off. Now, if I was feeling particularly lazy, I would just use a a black pro marker and colour my thread 
but on this occasion I'm just going to change over a couple of half inches to hold it into place and then I can take that away so thread I'm coming in with next is the the uni thread it's one fifth sorry 140 and it's the black one I'm going to cast that on like so and I can remove my rat's tail now the reason I've uh, I've not started with the black thread on the body is I'm a great believer in once the fly is wet the fish see a lot more than us so using the, the tan thread, I'm maintaining the lightness of my body. But for the thorax, I'm going to I'm going to make that black. So I just want to make sure that I've got a good uh, base for that to come on. So before I do anything with the thorax, I'm going to bring my rib up. Nice even turns. All the way up the fly. Try not to catch it on the point of your hook. It's unlikely, but it can snap. So once you've got it to the black part, or your thorax area, should I say, just bring that over to lock it into place. Then twist away your wire rib. Okay, so for the thorax, I'm going to use a little bit of this stuff. It's uh, Spectra Dubbin. This is quite an old packet. I'll need to try and get some more. But um, it's a black glistery dubbing and it's number 45. I'm going to take a pinch of that out. And I'm just going to spread it out with my finger, like so. And next thing, I've just put that to the side. Uh, and while I've been blethering away, my, my thread will have unspun. And I can see that I'll be quite an easy job just to split the thread like so. Now, I could have put this in my clip, but there's not much need for the amount of fibre I'm using. Just going to catch that in. So I'm just show you I've got that caught in, and I'm going to spin it up. Caddis um, pupa are quite an important part of a fish's meal diet, should I say? So this is a general purpose pattern that will serve you well it works really well so I've got my dubbing loop and my brush made and I've just teased out the fibers a little bit and I'm going to come back to the start of my thorax and wrap on now a couple of turns near the, the tip and to finish off I'm going to just add a little bit of super glue to my thread. A few more taps in. And then I can bury my thread in the head area with a half hitch, or you can use a quick finish tool if you have the skill. And then just to finish off, I'm going to come in with my dubbing brush. And firstly, I'm going to just rough out a few fibers of the wool. And then I'm going to just push back my dubbing on my thorax. Now, it's 
some people might not be happy that, that it's too shaggy at the front. Actually, I quite like this strandy look. It, it I just um, think it's the scruffier the better for trout. But if you're not happy, you can simply come in with your fingers, tidy up a little bit. I would recommend ripping it away with your fingers rather than coming in with scissors so you end up with that more natural look. And that um, goes really well. Because of the 3.3mm bead, it will get down in little holes that uh, lighter flies may not be able to. Thanks very much for watching.